Stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Thanks so much for joining me for this, wait, what? Tip of the week video. I showed you guys a um, tour of 20 different cards made with the Oso oh Eclectic Bundle last week, Friday, I believe it was. And one of my cards had this amazingness on the inside. And I said, wow, maybe I'll show you guys how to make this next week. So I sat down and figured out how to do these origami folds in a way that will be simple to show you so you can recreate it with your cards. So I made two completely different cards using the Rose Wonder stamp set and the matching Rose Garden Thinlets. This is a beautiful stamp set that was released in our catalog last year. It is still available, so if you need to get this, you head on over to my blog at www.astampabove.com. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I will have a picture of this particular stamp set and the thinlets that go with it where you can click right on a link and it'll head right to my store so you can order these. Also along with this card, I used the Petal Garden Designer Series paper and this is one of our little stacks and I'll show you all of these papers in the video too. So I always like to let you know where you can get a hold of this stuff. Let's get started and I'm going to show you how to make this totally cool inside and also a few tips about the outside of the card that I created. I'm going to start off by showing you how to do the origami part of this card and then I'm going to show you how I did the inlaid rose on the front of the card. So what I chose was the Petal Garden Designer Series paper stack and you get 48 sheets of these and they come just like this and each one is double sided. These are absolutely beautiful and the reason why I chose this is because while one side may have a busy print on it, the other side has a fairly mellow print on it that I could stamp on and that's what I thought was going to be great about this for this origami technique. So let me put this away. Just a couple things you're going to need to do this origami technique. I've got my bone folder and a pencil. And my design on my paper is up here in the right top corner, and that's where I want it to stay because down here is where I'm going to stamp. First thing you're going to do with your piece is you're going to fold the top down to meet the bottom. And you want to be very precise with your folding and make sure that you're getting your edges even to each other. And then we're going to fold, fold it back out, and now we're going to fold corner to corner on both sides. And again, you want to be very precise with this. Make sure you're getting right up there to the edge. Nice crisp lines. And again, with your bone folder, we're going to open that back up and we're going to go to the other bottom corner. There we go. Okay, so we've done three folds. Down to the bottom, down to the bottom corner, down to the bottom corner. Now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure in halfway. This is a six by six piece. I forgot to say that. Six by six, you guys, sorry about that. And I'm gonna make a mark at three inches and another mark at the bottom at three inches. Now I'm going to bring this corner in. Now I'm going to pinch it like this. So it wants to fold like that, but now we're going to push it in and pinch it like this. And I'm just going to bring that tip right over to that mark. Make sure everything's nice and straight. And now I'm going to push the whole thing down. And you might want to just try this on a piece of scrap paper so you get the feel for it. Now we've got a perfect little square right there in the corner. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Pinch it over, and I'm just going to, I'm kind of pushing this down a little bit to finagle it. Bring it over so, yep, it's going to meet in the middle right there. And now I can just simply push it down and give it a crisp fold with my bone folder. So this is what we've accomplished. We made two little squares right up here in the top 
of our designer series paper. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. So again, I'm just going to kind of pinch it inward and make it meet right there. Make sure that my top, oops, I need this to go just a little bit further. Make sure that your top is lined up right here. Fold that back like this and then fold it down. Everything's nice and even here. And there's our corner there. One more time. I'm kind of pushing on this to make my paper fold back down. And here we go. Now we've got corners in each of our corners. Okay, and this is how your paper folds up. Just push in these two sides. Every fold, everything folds down nice, just like that. Okay, this, remember I wanted this to be at the top, so I'm gonna stamp my greeting right here. I'm using Calypso Coral ink because we've got Calypso Coral flowers and the soft sky. And I chose to put a thank you greeting on the front of this card, so I'm gonna use the um, inside greeting that says, for some things there are just no words. Stamp that right there. And now we're going to put this into our card. I'm gonna add some liquid glue. I'm just gonna put the liquid glue on the bottom to start with. And I'm going to take this and center it pretty much towards the crease here. So you want to just get it in the middle. And then I'm going to put my glue on here and close my card. I absolutely love the fact that Stampin' Up! has all these coordinating colors. So we've got this designer series paper and it says right on the back of the pack the colors that match it. Calypso, Coral, Old Olive, Pool Party, Rich Razzleberry, Sweet Sugar Plum, Whisper White. So that's exactly what I've chosen here for my card. A Pool Party base, Calypso Coral here. If you hang around a minute, I'll show you how I did this part of the card also. So I used one of the designer series papers in the background behind the rose image. And then I also used it to stamp out and die cut my thank you. This Rose Wonder stamp set, all the images shown on the front are much smaller than they really are, but this is a very versatile set. You've got wedding, birthday, thank you, and sympathy all in one set with these gorgeous images. And then you get all these dies too. And <laughs> don't pay attention to my die. One of my customers accidentally ran it through with too many layers. So it looks like this now. But guess what? It still works. And I could probably bend it back a little bit, but it's fine. So all these images also in the uh, Rose Garden Thinlets. And I'll show you these a little bit. Look how big this rose stamp is. These are much bigger than shown on the front. And I have used this quite a bit. I think this is probably the first video I've made with this stamp set. So are you ready to see what this looks like? There you go. Not only do you have a gorgeous card on the outside, but you've got this big surprise on the inside. Your family and friends are just going to be wowed by this. I love surprises on the inside. And don't you just love to play with them? If you want to, you can take and erase these little pencil marks that you made. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, let me show you some tips about the front. So I have another card here that I did not finish so I could show you how I did this. I've got a Whisper White card base. And then I chose a Rich Razzleberry because this is one of the coordinating colors in the Sweet Sugar Plum Designer Series Paper Stack. So I'm going to put this on my Whisper White Thick card base. This is our thicker card stock. It's a lot more sturdy, stands up much better. And then I've got some Sweet Sugar Plum and I'm going to just add that right to the front here. 
layer, layer, layer. If you have lots of layers on your card, your card is going to be much more spectacular. I ran this through the Big Shot on a piece of five and an eighth by three and seven eighths cardstock. And the thing that I wanted you to pay attention to is if you're going to make this card, you want to make sure that your thinlet is hitting the edges so it's going to break this cardstock away. Does that make sense? So I made sure that when, let's, let's pretend like this is a layer, that when I put this on here, I made sure that this leaf was touching the very edge and this leaf was touching the very edge so that when I die cut this, this piece would come away. And then that allowed me to take this bottom piece and I'm going to glue it on to my card front. This is the part you would usually throw away. I think my friend BJ Peters is the one that I saw do this particular technique with the rose and I just thought it was so cool, right? So I'm just going to glue this down here and I think I don't like this little tiny piece sticking out here so I'm just going to cut that off. You can do that. If you have any little tiny pieces just cut them off. There we go. Okay so now we have this. Then we are going to bring in our rows and we're going to add it right back to where it was cut from. And you guys remember how I showed you how to glue these down, right? I'll show you again. This is the best thing ever. Here we go. I've got a sponge with just a little clip on it. You can use anything to kind of hold on to it. And I'm going to add some liquid glue right here. And where'd my silicone sheet go? Here it is. Got one of Stampin' Up! silicone sheets for this. This is a great way to use this. I'm going to take my rose, turn it face down, and now I'm going to get some glue on my sponge. Now you don't want to let your rose move because there's glue going to be left all over the silicone sheet, which you can wash right off. But you don't want the front of your rose to get glue on it. So we're kind of holding it in place. Oops, now my finger's stuck to it. Ah, don't let that happen. And we're just adding some glue around these edges. And now I'm going to pick this up. And we're going to put this right back. Oops, hang on. Some technical difficulties. Right back in place. And why did I want this white piece down here under this rose and not just have that rose there all by itself? Because I thought it was a really nice place to frame my greeting. And this is going to be a wedding card. And I thought that would really make this greeting pop to have that white back in there. What do you think? Oh my gosh, I love this. This is just so, so elegant and pretty. And now I've already taken a coordinating piece. And again, I cut this die out of a scrap of this. And I did my origami here. The last thing I need to do is stamp my wedding greeting. It says, wishing you a marriage made in heaven and a lifetime blessed by God. And I'm going to put that right in this little area that's left for stamping. We're going to fold this all up and add some glue. You don't want to get too much because you don't want to make a mess out of things here. And remember to glue it in there the right way. This one I'm going to glue to the top. There we go. And then we're going to add some glue to this side. And we're going to close our card. Are you ready? Isn't that pretty with those flowers up there on the top? What a beautiful, beautiful card. I love it. Okay, so there are both of the projects that I made. Each one just a tiny bit different. And the insides, spectacular. I have one last thing. Don't forget to stamp up your envelopes. We need those to be pretty too. 
Let me grab my old olive ink here. And I'm just gonna put some leaves on the front of this card or envelope. There we go, very pretty. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have fun with the origami technique to make your card as amazing as these are. Love it. Make sure you go check out my blog. I'll have all the dimensions and um, more photos and ingredients for these, for these cards. You can hop right on my blog and click on any of the products pictured and it'll take you right to my Stampin' Up! store where I would greatly appreciate your orders. You know that. Everyone who orders from me online gets a handmade thank you card and you'll be able to check out a lot of other things on my blog. Add a little sparkle to someone's day. Send them a card. Don't forget to click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.